Welcome, viewers and listeners, to another episode of the Dudes of the Dead podcast. If you can't tell, today we're doing a thrilling theater episode. We just got back from the from the theater. Literally. And uh, we're going to be reviewing Terrifier 3 today. But first, as always, we'll have our quick cuts. Uh, do you have a quick cut for us today? I do have a quick cut. Um, and just allow me to read this because I didn't memorize it. And apologies for my voice. I'm just at the tail end of a cold. So I watched Hell Hole, um, which was, I'll just read you the... Um, the uh, description, far away in the desolate Serbian wilderness, a U.S.-led fracking crew uncover a dormant monster gestating inside a centuries-old French soldier. What the frack? Now <laughs> awakened and exposed in its most dangerously fragile state, it tears through the men on the grounds in search of a new womb. So the reason that I ended up watching this was it's um, John Adams and Toby Poser, do what was you, the year on this one? Uh, 2024. It is, okay. Because do you remember the one we watched about, um, I think that had Hell in the Name, is it Hell Bent? The one with the woman and the daughter, the witches? Uh, it wasn't Hell Bent, but yes, I do. Yeah, I recognize the name when you said okay, it. Okay, yeah, so it's the same family. Cool. It's that yeah, woman the, the, and the family yeah. of filmmakers. Yeah. They did the witch one. Yeah. They reviewed it season three. I didn't think it was as good as the other one. And I wish I could remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but it, it was okay. And I think they do, like, I like those, the indie side of what they do. Yeah. This was definitely bigger budget than the other one. Cause it looked like they were, I mean, I sh I should look it up. They, it looked like they were in Soviet Russia, but I'm not sure. That's oh, really bugging me now. The name of that. Movie. I know. Um, It'll come to us. It will. It's got hell in it, doesn't it? I think it does. But it wasn't Hellbent. It was no. uh, anyway. anyway. Hellbender. 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 Oh, it's it. close. Good so job. close. You got it. All right. All right. So you recommend it then? I do. But yeah. not as good as Hellbender. I didn't think it was as good as Hellbender, but it was not bad. Not okay. bad. All right. So my quick cut is a TV series. Uh, and I think I told you this already, but this is from. And shout out mm. to my friends Brett and Jordy, who both were convincing me. They're like, this is a Mike show. You were like the show. And um I don't get as much time to watch TV these days, probably because I'm watching a lot of horror, but I heard good things and it's October for Halloween. So from uh, Unravel the Mystery of a City in the Middle of the USA that Imprisons Everyone Who Enters. As, res as the residents struggle to maintain a sense of normality and seek a way out, they must also survive the threats of the surrounding forest. So this one is a bit of a mystery. Uh, I've seen other shows like this where there's okay. like a phenomenon. Essentially, there's a town and people don't quite know how to get out. I don't think that's spoilers because that's the premise of the show. Right. And how far did you get? Did you? So I'm in the second season, just starting. Oh, wow. Okay. I only made it to, I think, episode four of season one. I have to go back. I liked it, but I just lost. I got busy with other stuff. Yeah, I kind of like it for the same reason I like zombie films. Where you have like a, a cast of characters and how they interact in this like extra paranormal kind of phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. And uh it's good. It's very well done. This is on Paramount Plus, so I think it's not getting as much buzz as it would if it were on Netflix or something. Yeah. But it has a 96% critic score uh, and an 82% audience score, so it's reviewing very well. Um, it's starring Harold Perrineau. Did you ever watch Oz back in the day on Showcase, the prison no. show? Okay, there's a character in a wheelchair from that who's the star in this film, uh, in this show, sorry. Uh, and it's good. It's interesting. My concern is that the premise is really intriguing and interesting, but I'm not sure if they'll be able to resolve it in like a satisfying way. Yeah. I didn't watch Lost, but I know like a lot of people were dissatisfied with the ending to that show. And I think this is setting up for a similar kind of scenario where it's so intriguing, the premise, but can you actually wrap it up in a way that's satisfying? Yeah. We'll see. And I think, I mean, my perception of those shows too is that the danger is because I think it's really good what I've seen so far. And it was getting a lot of buzz, even though it wasn't um, like super popular. There was definitely a buzz. Um, maybe when I, when did I start watching it? Maybe last spring I, I started seeing buzz around the internet. But my question with those shows often is, can you sustain the writing? And if it's popular, how long are you going to try to milk that? And, yes. and lose the real premise of the show. So my understanding right now, they're in the third season, and I've heard they're scheduled for five seasons. Do you think it can go that long? We'll see. I'm just starting the second. I'm still into it and intrigued, but maybe hmm. not. Yeah, okay. I do okay. find that to be the downfall of love television shows yeah. is they just yeah. milk it for too long. Yeah. But it's got interesting, compelling characters. Uh, it's really well-written. It's well-produced. 
but you gave up on it. So what made you stop watching? Um, I don't think I gave up on it. I just, I had so many other things I wanted to watch and I'm, um, I don't know if we've, if we've talked about this before. I, I struggle with serial TV. I noticed that you're not as into no. TV shows. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I think because I've been disappointed so many times, I, I hesitate to give it my attention. Yeah. Like I absolutely loved Dexter. Dexter's really good. And then it just went downhill. True Blood, same thing. Um, There's actually probably very few shows that wrap up in a satisfying way. Even something like Game of Thrones, which is like the most popular TV show. So amazing. A lot of dissatisfaction with the last season. So I, I I hear you there. But, but I mean, the thing that, that challenges me is that I, then I miss some really good television and television often is where it's at. Definitely. Right. So, so I have to kind of, I have to figure out a way to, uh, I go back, like we, I started yellow jackets. Yellow jackets is fantastic. And uh, again, I mean, it was the first episode was really good. And I'm like, yeah, but then I, I got, you know, stars in my eyes for all these other things I wanted to see. Um, so we'll see. I'll, I'll definitely go back to it. Okay, cool. Anyways, so that's my quick cut. And for today, our feature is Terrifier 3. Mm-hmm. So- Art the Clown is set to unleash chaos in the unsuspecting residents of Miles County as the peacefully drift off to sleep on Christmas Eve. So this is a Christmas terrifier film. Yeah. Directed by <laughs> Damien Leone and starring Lauren Lavera as Sienna and David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown. Currently, this has a 7.1 on the Internet Movie Database, a wow. 76% critic score, and a 90% audience score. Wow. That's as of today. Okay. This only has been out for a couple of days. This may evolve over time. So my recollection is that you weren't too big on Terrifier 2. Because I remember I liked it. I put it on my top 10. Mm-hmm. You did not. And I seem to recall us having a conversation about you not really liking Terrifier 2. But then I get the impression that it's sort of grown on you. Mm-hmm. And I know you were anticipating this one. Yeah. So how has your appreciation for the Terrifier franchise evolved? Um. Well, this definitely held my attention. <laughs> this one, um, I mean, Mike, and we'll we'll probably get to it. But my question that was buzzing in my mind as I was driving back from the theater was, do you think it sur- it it went it surpassed the bedroom scene <laughs> in the in the second one? Right. So if you've not seen Terrifier two, there's an infamous scene that's I think the most mean spirited, gory thing <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> And I don't know actually if any one scene in this topped that scene, but overall this had a lot more than Terrifier 2. Yeah, like, agreed. This agreed. had like multiple scenes that approached that yeah. level. I think they tried and we can talk about which sure, scene. Sure. I think there's a scene that in his mind he was trying to compete with that bedroom scene from Terrifier 2. But I think now it's, I think neither of us went back and watched Terrifier no, 2. No, no. So Which unfortunately, I, I kind of regret it as well. Yeah. But part of me was like, oh, do I want to sit through that again? <laughs> yeah, These are sure. kind of like hard to watch. They and are. We can talk they about are. that. Yeah. Um, so based on memory alone, I don't think any one scene topped it, but it came pretty close. And overall, this one was way gorier, I think, than Terrifier yeah. 2. Yeah, I think the sum total of it was was more um, than than the second one, but I don't know if it went over the top. And although there were some there were some scenes. So did you see Terrifier two more than once? I did watch it a second time. You did. So yeah. is that what changed your? I think so. I mean, I've never been a real gore hound. That's not something that 
draws me to a film. Um, but I think the combination of pushing the envelope and, and wanting to, to te- keep pushing the boundaries, um, which Damien Leone is, is definitely trying to do. And also just the character of Art the Clown, I find quite frightening. Um, the fact that he's silent. Um, this one, and you can uh, chime in, it seemed like they were trying to do a, a little bit more humor. I thought so. I was just going to say that this time he seemed less creepy and more trying to be funny. Yeah. And I, I didn't appreciate that as much. Um, I liked, um, I liked the edginess of his lack of humor. I, I don't, I don't want him to turn into a Freddy Krueger. Which he's sort of flirting with a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So I put Terrifier 2 on my top 10 list. And it wasn't because of the gore, because I don't necessarily think I'm a gore hound either, though, you know, seeing them push the envelope is interesting. He's a very rich filmmaker, though. And I found that, again, in this one. And one thing I really appreciated is, like, the warm lighting that he uses. Mm. The All of his sets, there's so many things in the background, like little decorations. Like, every bedroom or every space there's so much to look at and so much going on i love what he does with the soundtrack he has this like synth kind of like vibe to it that i find captivating and i don't know i'm gonna word this and i like he's kind of created this like mythological Mm. element with the sienna character yeah and so i wondered about that because i think you mentioned um, something about that in the last Terrifier where there's there's almost a fantasy element. Yeah, there's like an yeah. ethereal quality to it that I find kind of compelling. And if it were just Art the Clown going around just destroying people, I don't think it would have the same appeal. But something about that, like good versus evil, and he is so yes. evil, but they introduce those kind of fantasy elements. It reminds me a little bit of Mandy almost. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what I think is special and how I liked it. Did you like this one more than Terrifier 2? I'm not sure. I think I'm going to have to go back. I don't know if I can rewatch it, but um, I think I may have to go back and rewatch it because um, I enjoyed this, obviously, because I was laughing at some of the parts in, in, in the film and not because of Art the Clown's humor, but just because of the over-the-top gore. Um I think there's still, I think I will enjoy it more when I make some connections about some of the plot line because yes. I'm missing, I've forgotten something or I didn't quite catch something from two to three. And I think there's a thread going through that I need to go back in. Cause I, I don't know if you remember, I think I made this comment when we, when we reviewed two, that I wasn't sure about the end and that fantasy stuff yeah, yeah. Um, kind of threw me off um, off guard a little bit. So I need to follow that through line and see if I can figure out uh, to connect the dots for myself. Yeah. So I guess I have an academic question for you. Okay. Do you feel a horror film can go too far? I wondered that. Um, I don't think anybody left though. I think the lady that I thought was leaving came back. Just went to the washroom? Yeah. Yeah, no, maybe not. Um, that's a really good question. Um so I've heard some <laughs> horror commentators say that, like, for them, something like a Serbian film right. was, like, too far, which I can see. Um, which, but this is almost harder to watch in a lot of ways. I mean, the conceptually what's happening in a Serbian film is disturbing, but he almost goes there almost this time as well, and at least in terms of, like, the visual gore. Yeah. He's still... I mean, no, I won't say that because that, that's a bit of a spoiler, but I feel that he's still careful about how he shows some things. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really good question because and a Serbian film is a great example because that's one that I never feel compelled to watch again. It, it, no. it absolutely. So you've seen it. Shocked me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, it wasn't necessarily there. There were some gore, um, gory bits, not in this way. I find this kind of film cartoonish in its violence. That's true. It's like so over the top, yeah. like a Kill Bill almost yeah. on steroids. And it's, yeah. So for me, 
I mean, I was laughing because it's it, like some of the stuff was just so crazy over the top ridiculous. That That's the reaction, right? You yeah. laugh. Yeah. And I was, I was saying to you in the theater, like I was hard pressed whether I wanted to look at the screen or watch people's reactions, people's reactions. Yeah. Like the girl next was just squirming, like turned completely <laughs> the way around. Couldn't even look at the screen, like hiding through her fingers. It was pretty funny. Cause there were things. So for example, great. We, we've, um, uh, we reviewed substance recently and Substance feels like frozen compared to this film. There were still elements of substance, though, that I found more uncomfortable. Because mm, it was more visceral and less cartoonish? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. And so I think that's, again, coming back to that Serbian or like Green Inferno or Cannibal Holocaust. Or, so if they were playing it straight. Yeah, I think so. But because it has that element of humor, that kind of wink to the yes. audience. Yeah, that's true. Especially that opening scene. Yeah. Like we were laughing the whole time, even though what you're watching is so over the top. And and again, coming down to his sound design too. Um, yes. Some of that stuff is again, I mean, so over the top that you kind of have to laugh because it's like, okay, I was trying to imagine, you know, um, knowing Foley artists and the kind of things that they do is like, okay, is that a cantaloupe or like, what are they, what sound are they using for that? Yeah. I find this one a little harder, but to be fair, I did not watch any of the other ones in the theater. This is my first terrifier in the movie theater yeah. experience. And yeah, I think the sound and the size and this one's pretty relentless with the violence. It is. There's, there's no, um, like I, if I think back to all, from, from all Hallows Eve to terrifier, terrifier two, there's the violence and then there's the creepy scenes. Um, I'm thinking of like the first terrifier where he's stalking some of his victims. You yeah. see less of that in this yeah. and it's more just straight up. He seems to have like figured out kind of what the tone of these yeah. films is and what he's going for because there's not much plot. No, it's kind of the, the siblings dealing with the trauma of the first experience. So he almost just establishes these set pieces in yeah. these different environments just to set up the kills. And then just um, threads Art the Clown through it, <laughs> throughout. right? Um, now, so... So it, you struggle with runtime, typically. Yes. For what this film is and what it's doing, is it? Would, would it feel too long given there isn't much of a plot? It's just kind of like kill after kill after kill. It was two hours of that. I think it was longer than two hours, wasn't it? Because the runtime... Yeah, I think it was like two hours and 10 minutes. And okay. the first one was, I think, two and a half hours. Yeah. I know a very common criticism of Terrifier 2 is just like, it was too long. Did you feel that? I, To be fair, I didn't feel that. And I was surprised when I got in my car and looked at the time because it was like, oh, I didn't, it didn't feel that it went over two hours. Yeah. However, there, there are, if I wanted to make it a tighter edit, I would have said, yeah, there's probably some things that didn't need to be there. Yeah, this one maybe meandered a yeah. little bit less yeah. than Terrifier 2. So yeah, I guess in terms of this question, like, can it go too far? I guess in terms of art, it's up to the artist to create whatever he or she wants to create to evoke an emotional reaction. And those who want to sit through it and experience it can, and those who don't won't. So I guess I would say maybe you can't go too far. But this one pushes it, especially we're talking about kids and stuff. Yeah. Um, so in, in your mind, though, can can it go like where um not not specifically um you know like a scene but what would be too far in your mind have you seen anything that approaches that other than this one um so i guess in terms of something like cannibal holocaust where there's actual animal cruelty happening right that's too far but i guess in terms of if it's fiction and it's only fiction then i don't know if there is a such thing off the top of my head is too far. It just means you're just appealing to a smaller and a smaller and a smaller audience yeah. who will participate or appreciate what you're doing. But like ethically, if it's fiction, I don't know if there's such thing as too far. It just appeals to a smaller audience. Yeah. And what, I mean, it's interesting to me too, because I'm thinking about some of the scenes in American psycho, for example, which are pretty gory. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it's it's a tricky question because the other the other thing that crossed my mind when you asked the question was things that I thought went too far, let's say ten years ago, are are nothing in comparison to what I'm seeing now. No, like this is pushing it pretty far. Like yeah. in terms of gore, like I, I don't even know how you would top these two films. 
Well, Damien Leone's guy, he's, he's definitely... He's going to try. I'm sure he's going to try. Opportunity, but just yeah, like, but there's think, only so many things you can do to yeah. the human body. And he, you know... I think it's the punch-in on the kills. Like, I, I mean, I, I can't think of anything that approaches this. No, and we can maybe go into a bit more detail yeah, yeah, on the spoilers, sure. but I think we were discussing what is a spoiler for Terrifier 3, and I think it's the nature of the kills that's the spoiler, because yeah. there really isn't a whole lot of plot happening, so we will... Spare you those if you've not seen it yet. Indeed. So you liked it? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, uh, again, it's a bit of a different experience seeing it on the big screen. And I'm still a little bit reeling. So when we did Terrifier 2, we had seen it. And then I went away and thought about it. This one is just reaction. It's like, wow, that was a lot <laughs> in the theater, right? Yeah, part of me is wondering if it's like a formula now that I would get tired of. Like the second one was so fresh, like, yeah. oh, this is like really yeah. pushing the boundaries. And this one's like, okay, we're pushing the boundaries even more. But I don't feel like this one um, was as revolutionary maybe as Terrifier 2. No, same formula. So I'm starting to see like how many just ridiculous bloodbaths do I want to watch? So yeah. like, would I be less excited for Terrifier 4 at this rate? Probably because it just seems like he's just going to go as hard as he can go. But story-wise, there's less... Like the mythological element we were talking about, I think was more developed in the second one. Yeah. And they have that here, but to a lesser extent. I mean, it's there because they've carried it over, but they haven't really progressed that story very much. Yeah. But I do visually find uh, his stuff compelling. I like the vibe I get, not just the gore, but like just from the whole yeah. thing. In yeah, totality. I agree. I liked how you worded that earlier that he's a rich filmmaker. So if he, he's, I think conscious of not just the visual elements in the scene, in the frame, but the sound design, what are those? Cause there's no doubt in my mind that some of the sound design, when things are happening, he's like, nah, that's not squishy enough. Let's yeah. get, you know, I think he's probably hands on there. And he really seems to juxtapose like in the family home, it is so warm and there's lights everywhere and there's the fireplace and there's the Christmas music and it looks very lived in. It looks very homey. And then when you have like Art the Clown working in his little factory, it's super dark. It's yeah. cold. There's no warmth whatsoever. And I, I find that kind of interesting what he does visually. And yeah, the epic good versus evil thing that he introduces, I think, is also good. But I don't know. I think maybe like if we get to Terrifier 7, I'm not sure <laughs> if well, you can sustain that. Um, why, um, or not why, but what did you think about the Christmas theme? Yeah, I kind of like the juxtaposition of like, yeah, me too. The Christmas music and the carols and the lights and the milk and cookies with just like over the top yeah. or I, I mean, it's probably apocryphal, but I do find that that's a really nice mix because you've got the, the cheer of the season and you've got the music of the season and the yeah. lights, which something that. like black Christmas captures exactly. so well. So yeah, I think Christmas horror I, I do like. Yeah, I think it's a fun. It's got it's got real good potential. Real good potential. It's <laughs> it's got uh, really great potential because when you mix, for the most part, the the feelings of the season and the trappings of the season, the bright lights and all that kind of stuff, and you mix it with that darker side, yeah. it's a nice balance, I think. And aesthetically, the look of Art the Clown as Santa yes. <laughs> was oh. pretty creepy. Uh, and they do some fun things with that as yes. well. So I just wish they had released it later, like closer to Christmas time. It feels a bit early in mid-October to be like in Christmas spirit. If this came out like late November, early December, I yeah, think that would have been better. The release date's been out for ages. So he, he obviously, I mean... I don't know exactly how the release dates work. I'm assuming that the studio maybe negotiates with the, because we were commenting on uh, Robert Eggers, uh, no, David Eggers. Um, Robert, Robert Eggers. Robert Eggers. I always get those two mixed up. I don't know why. Um, and Nosferatu coming out on Christmas Day or yeah. Boxing Day or something. It's and it's, those. yeah, it's like, why? It's, I mean, Dracula, that, that whole lore is not a there's not christmas related yeah um yeah i think this would have been i don't know if it would have been better at that time of year but like yeah like after remembrance day late november um when you uh when you you see the things of the season mm -hmm. i think that would have been a fun time to have this come out for sure um and i think he probably avoided halloween because that was in the second one yeah so he probably didn't want this to be a Michael Myers kind of Halloween thing. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, and fun story. I'm 41 years old and I got ID'd to get into this movie. Oh, yeah, he told me that. So I when like, I bought my what? ticket, he's like, oh, uh, yeah, you got to be 18 to watch this movie. Can I see your ID? I was like, oh, I haven't been carded in a long time. Sure. And I, I've, I mean, we, we, I think maybe we don't see, like maybe a lot of the movies are 14A or whatever. I think this is so extreme. Maybe, yeah. I wonder if they're being told to like, you need to actually like, check people's IDs. So you're not letting like 14 year olds see this movie. I, so yeah, something about what you said about the humor. So you didn't appreciate the humor. Well, I did in this movie, but my worry was it, it's going to disintegrate into right. a Freddy, yeah. uh, which becomes a parody of itself. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't find those things stick to the genre and throw in little bits of other things but don't make it a parody of itself. Yeah, because I think I would struggle a lot more with this film if it didn't have that layer of comedy to it. It would be hard to take. If it was just yeah. completely straight and mean-spirited without that kind of nod to the audience with the humor, I feel like it'd be a lot harder to sit through. But the whole time, yeah. even before he's about to do what he's about to do, there's usually like some comic yes. relief, which it's an interesting combination. Because if it didn't have the comic edge, it would be more like a Martyrs, which is just like so heavy. Yeah. Because even I was finding it a little bit draining by the end. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, I don't know how much more blood and guts I can take. <laughs> yeah, totally. But I don't think, I think you and I, neither of us would identify as gore hounds. Not at all. Like, that's not why I watch horror movies. But as someone who covers the genre and for someone who's pushing the envelope that's for, it's like kind of a marvel to witness. But I'm not like, oh, yeah, give me more of that. Yeah, I, I prefer um, to be creeped out or to be... Um, not jump scares, but like a real scare. I prefer that to the gore. Um, but I, I, as I watch more and more, I do appreciate that more and more. And I can see the draw because it is a release and, and you can laugh at it if it's yeah. done well. And if it's done in this, and I've said this about other things like Friday the 13th, it's cartoonish. It's so over the top. I can't believe what I'm seeing. So your reaction is to my reaction is just to laugh. Yeah. And the practicals are so good. And yeah. I think it's very appropriate. They had Tom Savini with a, that was such a great cameo, cameo. there as someone yeah. who like really revol revolutionized like uh, practical effects in yeah. horror films. That was pretty cool. Actually. Did you, you're, I, I don't think you ever watched wrestling, but Chris Jericho, who's a famous wrestler. Was I recognize as well. him as a wrestler, but I wouldn't know where he's from. Yeah. Um, because I've seen commercials or, you yeah, know, exactly. Whatever. Lauren Levera. I liked the Sienna character. Too. Yeah, I, I do like her as a character. Really compelling. She's a good final girl. I found myself like rooting for her and caring about her. Yeah. Um, so I think they do a pretty good job with character. Yeah, I think so. I'm, um, Plot is almost non-existent, though. Do, now, I, I I don't know if I'm, you know, I'm getting old, so I don't know if I'm remembering, but I've watched from All Hallows Eve all the way through. Yeah. Do we ever know what the like where art the clown comes from. See, I don't quite remember either. And this is where I kind of wished I've seen them all okay. over time, but I yeah. didn't go back. I mean, he's clearly has a supernatural demonic yeah, element yeah. Bent to him. Yeah. Like he's not a real guy. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I wonder, I feel like they developed most of that in terrifier too. I think so. Yeah. 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 And I think he'll continue to develop that, but. So you don't know either. I don't know for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's there's definitely a supernatural element to him. I just couldn't remember if they actually give us a, ba a creation story for him. Not that it matters, but that might be a place to take it. Yeah. And I couldn't a, quite remember the genesis of his sidekick character too, the, yeah, the woman. I, yeah, I was struggling and I was kicking myself for not having watched the second one again because it's been a couple of years and I was like, oh, I don't rem I can't see the through line so yeah, I'll go back and figure it out. But it feels like Damien Leone here has like crafted the horror icon for this time period though. Do you think? I think so. Like Art the Clown, I think is becoming, the, I think, I think, I think 21st he, century, yeah. like Jason or Freddy. Yeah. yeah. I think he wants to make it a franchise hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And we were saying with, um, in a violent nature. Yeah you kind of have that same level of gore pushing and he reminds me kind of Jason and art. The clown reminds me kind of Freddie. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like you have this new generation of like horror icons. Yeah. Yeah. And I do, I mean, I do appreciate his silent nature because it adds an element. I mean, by 
by taking some, by subtracting that element, I feel like it adds an element to the story because, well, I guess, um, Michael Myers is the same. He never speaks and Jason doesn't speak. But he's so expressive with his facial. That's right. Yeah. um, He's not just this blank slate. No. And he has a lot of like body comedy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's pretty clever actually. I mean, his, you know, his, um, he's like a, a mime clown, right? So the idea that he's using his hands and his eyes and his mouth a, as an expressive element, yeah, I, I appreciate that layer because you don't get that in the Michael Myers or the Jasons with the masks, right? No, and I think for Freddy, because I've gone back and I'm watching the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise right now, he has a lot of like cheesy one-liners. Yes. So at least it spares Art the Clown from exactly. having to say anything cheesy. It's exactly. all with facial performance. Should we get into spoilers? Is there anything non-spoiler that you want to touch on? Um, I don't think so. I think if we want to, yeah, get into spoilers, that would be great. So are you are you recommending this? You didn't... I mean, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm hard-pressed to think of many people in my life that would want to watch this. Yeah, agreed, actually. So it's like, this is a very cautious recommend. I think even for your average horror goer, this is probably not going to appeal. I think you have to be a real hardcore gore hound to to enjoy this, if you want to call it that. Yeah, or like a horror completionist where you want to explore every subgenre yeah. and niche. But like, yeah, I just struggle to think of many people, even people who enjoy horror movies who would who could sit through this and appreciate it or enjoy it. But for the most hardcore of horror fans, I do recommend it. So you're going to take the grad class to this one then? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it just really pushes the boundaries. It was hard to watch. So a very cautious, a recommend. very cautious recommend. Yeah. yeah. So like this is the most extreme violence on film I think I've ever seen. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's got to be one of the goriest films in existence. So you have to know going into it that that's what you're signing up for. Yeah. Uh, And I think there's a lot of people who could not stomach this movie. 100%. So it's hard to recommend. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I feel the same way. It's like you would really, you would have to have your reasons going in. Either you love the gore and you just want to experience that or you're a completionist. I agree with you. But I struggle to see too many people clamoring to see this one. Yeah. Um, I mean, even on, we're on, we're recording on a holiday Monday. I mean, what, what there may be 20 people in the theater. I don't even know if there's that many. Yeah. And there's some horror movies I watch. I'm like, Oh man, like I really wish people, more people would watch this. Like I think the substance though, it is gory. I think, Oh, there's so much here yes. that lots of people would appreciate Absolutely. or like, Oh, like hereditary, like Tony Klett's performance is so amazing. You have to watch this movie. Terrifier three. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Yeah, I can think of one or two people who I who might appreciate this, but overwhelmingly people what I don't think. Yeah, fair. Would want to watch this. So yeah. Okay. So be careful out there. And we're in the spoilers. 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 Okay, spoilers. So I just had an upcoming thing spoiled for me. What do you got? So I knew they were setting up that couple. Um, the roommate and his girlfriend. Yeah. It seemed like they were like preparing them to be like the ultimate sacrificial lambs with like the over the top biggest kill of the, of the film. Do you think it, what did you think of the shower chainsaw scene relative to the bedroom scene? (laughs) Well, they didn't spare you any details. That's for sure. They like, that's the one I was thinking of when they, like they really punch in and show you everything. And for, for the practicals, unbelievable like i mean oh, yeah. from a from a filmmaker standpoint i was like wow how do they do that because in the 80s when they're doing this kind of stuff it just looks so fake it, yeah that you can just tell this is some like body double you made but here it looks real i actually don't know how they do it yeah that uh, kind of incredible yeah and i, I mean <laughs> definitely, definitely some gratuitous bits with the chainsaw too on in the male anatomy because i remember terrifier one was shocking when he she, he hangs the woman upside yes. down and cuts her down yeah. the middle so you kind of have this that scene on steroids here except it's with a guy on the floor and a chainsaw but yeah they show all of it and i mean uh, the and they're coming to the shower so they're not wearing anything and uh and then when he makes the blood angel at the end of that okay. scene yeah. <laughs> but that's where the humor is right totally. so it's like everyone in the theater is laughing at that point totally and i think that's the combination that makes it work well yeah i mean because smartly i think he recognizes that you, you can't maintain 
that level of gore and tension, you've got to release it. So th- I, I appreciate those scenes of humor where you you diffuse the tension and you have him make a blood angel on the floor in the shower. Like that's, it's great because it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, does it surprise you that he shies away from nudity? I noticed in the shower scene, they made sure nothing was shown. But to me, it's just so ridiculous that like, this is the most extreme film I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Yeah, he says, oh, we can't show a nipple, but here's like people being dismembered in the most horrific ways. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, it always makes me shake my head when you're looking at American versus European films. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay, so we can be terrorized by by the gore, but you can't show us just normal anatomy. <laughs> it just seems kind of absurd. It's it like, does. oh, yeah. you're showing restraint in this one area when everything about this film is just having no restraint But I no think you know whatsoever. why, because because the censors would ask for an X rating. And yeah. what surprises me is what I'm curious to know in the future is what had to be cut to get this to an R rating. Yeah, is it R? Well, it must have been if they ID'd you. Must have been. Oh no! But isn't there like NC seventeen, or isn't there like a level above R? Yeah, there is. I don't. Do we have NC seventeen, or is that American? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I feel like this is. I thought it was 18A, and yeah. then R, and then X in Canada. I didn't know we had an NC seventeen, but maybe we do. Because then this would eight. So R is higher than 18A. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I, I think so. I, I mean, and this is the most extreme R that I can almost think of ever. Seen. Yeah, like, I'm almost shocked that it's made into movie theaters. Well, this is so. Was Terrifier two in movie theaters? It was, but we, limited. I, yeah, we didn't see it. No. I mean, what what I'm getting at is, I I have to ask if this is the R cut. What did they have to? Because I'm I'm assuming that the the cut that was sent probably would have been an X. Maybe. And then. Because usually that's the way it happens, right? It's like, okay, well, if you cut this, this, and this, we can give you an R. So the downfall of our thrilling theater episodes is I tried to not read anything or I wanted to go into this blind. Yeah, So I, I didn't do any research about no, these neither. things. But I would like to go watch some interviews and maybe find out if yeah. anything was. It's hard to imagine anything would be cut. Because <laughs> it's like, what could you possibly cut? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to imagine anything worse than what we've I mean, He's decorating a Christmas tree with intestines <laughs> as like the, the tinsel. It's <laughs> oh, very so... extreme. Now, and... the thing I think <coughs> that me. gave people pause with the trailer was when they have the little girl coming down on yes. Christmas morning and, you know, it's Art of the Clowns, so you know yeah. what's going to happen. Did you have any level of discomfort with what they were doing with kids in this case? Because I think that's... New and for a lot of people, like when you ask the question, can you go too far? I think a lot of people would say yes, if it involves kids. And I think. I think that's how he's trying to push the envelope at this one. I think so, because he implied I was that was what I was thinking of when I was talking about some scenes that he's careful with, like the explosion in the mall. You know, it's all children, yeah. but he doesn't show anything. And the boy in the bedroom at the you beginning, don't see you it. don't see it. It's Whereas so I guess he parents. is showing some restraint. Yeah. And maybe that's something that they had to cut. Possibly, because I can see that being like I think your audience would turn on you. Um unless <laughs> unless you've got something wrong with you. Yeah. Like I think I think the audience would go, okay, um, I don't mind. But the kids, they showed the aftermath of the explosion. They did. So even that was kind of shocking. Oh, I wasn't sure if he would go there or if it would just be the explosion. So basically, Art the Clown is giving out these gifts to kids. And this one boy like opens a box and there's an explosion and kills a bunch of kids at this like mall Santa thing. And the opening scene, they imply that he gets the last. Yeah, and you see the aftermath. Actually, when the mother goes into the bedroom, you see his... No, you see the boy. Yeah, oh, sorry. But his sister, when right. he finds her in the cupboard, yeah, they, you just, they just um, pull back and you see the axe. Yes. But you don't actually see... See, him. see or hear anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's implied heavily. Now, that's interesting because that was one of my biggest um, ick factors with a Serbian film. Exactly. Is that there's a child involved in abuse. Yeah. And it's pretty nasty. Yeah. Um, so that's what that one gave me pause because it's like, okay, I don't know if that was necessary. Like you could have done what you did and had me react the way I reacted without involving a child. Um, yeah. Even though I think what they're doing is trying to push that 100%. envelope on purpose. Yeah. So, um, but I, I can, I don't know. I, I can see, 
I can see my reaction perhaps being, yeah, I'm not interested in that. So do you think he went too far in this case or no? Nope. No, okay. No, because to me, I mean, it's implied, but it's never on screen. You you see the aftermath. Yeah. Um. So there's more than just an implication. Um. But it's not as gratuitous as the adult scenes. So no. I think he is trying to be... I mean, it's, it's all relative, right? <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, I mean, you know, having said how gory it is, he, I think there, there is some sensibility there to the audience. Yeah. Maybe he's just saving something for like future Could be. films. Like, oh, if I push all the envelopes now, what do I get? We, I mean, I asked Mike about, um, there was a recent Evolution of Horror podcast episode where they interviewed um, Damien Leone with no spoilers, just talking about um, the, f- the franchise of, of Art the Clown. And he, uh, the, the director said, I'll do this as long as people want to, like he said, if I do, you know, um, Terrifier 100, good with me. And he's, and he, the interesting thing too, he said, when I get tired, I have no qualms about handing it off to another director. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so he just said, yeah, if people want to see it, I'll make the films. I mean, I feel like this film had a lot more buzz than Terrifier 2. So yeah. my feeling is that it's actually growing in popularity. I haven't looked at like numbers yet, but. I was, I mean, I didn't look Terrifier up. 1 was very niche. It was. And then Terrifier 2 got yeah. attention. I think Terrifier yeah. 3 is just getting that much more attention. Yeah. yeah. And I was shocked that it got 7.1. Yeah. On IMDb. Because I would have thought that this gore fest would have been like a 5.2 It had a 90% something. audience score? Yeah. That's crazy. Clearly like. The people going to see this film are people yeah. who that would appeal to, but and I think they're. I think it's demonstrating too that he's found the right blend of gore, comedy, fantasy. All of these different elements are appealing to different members of the audience. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. It's that cartoonish style, the fantasy elements, the humor that makes the horror or the body horror and the gore ultimately more palatable. Yeah. Because it's not entirely mean spirited. Yeah. It's kind of, it's a wink and a nod to the audience. So. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So he's found the formula to get away with pushing the envelope as much as yeah. one can. I think so. But I think coming back to what you said earlier, like how how far he's able to go is going to depend on how inventive he becomes. Because a story, if he doesn't add some elements to the story, there's not much more I can see him doing other than just more of the same. Yeah. I mean, there's only so many things you can do to a human yeah. body and he's done most of them at this point. So it's like, how do you I mean, keep it interesting? What I can see happening is an origin story yeah. or more of a backstory of Sienna and like those elements, like how did that end up happening yeah um the fa- more of the fantasy elements but yeah he's introduced enough of that i think to get people's curiosity i think peaked. so yeah so exploring that more might give it some legs yeah yeah um and so far he's remained i mean the nice thing that I, and i guess it doesn't matter with jason because you never see him but i think there will also come a change when art the clown is no longer um thornton when it's somebody else that's right and how how do you maintain um you know, every actor is going to want to do something a little bit different. So how do you maintain the art, the clown element? Get Willem without, Dafoe in there? Maybe. Steve yeah, I could see him doing. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, Will, Willem Dafoe as the goblin, was it? In Green Sp- Goblin. Green yeah. Goblin. Um, I could see that makeup working for his face. Yeah, he's got that yeah. kind of bony. Yeah, you know? yeah. So to me, it felt like there was more kills, though. It certainly this. felt that way to me. It's just one after the other. It's funny you mentioned the sound design because it's actually the, whatever squishy things they got going on. <laughs> yeah, totally. The sound just over the top, like it really kind of works well with the practical effects. Well, cause that opening scene when you know he's in the boy's bedroom yeah. and you can just hear the wax of the ax. Yeah. Cause there's times where he does show or he doesn't show stuff. It's happening off screen, yeah. but it's the sound and, and that's almost just as effective. I don't know if it got you, but, um, Whatever that character is, demon or whatever. His sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. And and she's in the bathtub and slits her arm. You could that was really squishy. Yeah. Um, that one really got me. I was like, whoo. And I don't even know if I want to mention it on the podcast, but what she's doing with the shard of glass. Oh, while, yeah, like, let's not mention that. Let's no. just say it's reminiscent of a scene from The Exorcist. That's right. Yeah. While he was skinning the guy's yeah. head basically with an exacto knife. Like it is really 
extreme. That that one might have been too far. I don't know. Yeah, um, that one might have gone over the top. But um, and that's the thing. There was more in this one that kind of yes. pushed the envelope. Whereas, like in two, it's like that bedroom scene is just so far and beyond. Yes. I don't, to ones, be honest, I don't remember many of the other, that one's the one that stands out to no, me. No, for sure. Yeah, that's true. But Whereas this one, this one, there's quite a few, like there's, there's that scene, there's the shower scene. Um, I mean, you know, that the, um, that one of the characters is, you know, his days are, are short when he's talking on the phone. Yes. Um, so yeah, there were some, and towards the end there in the finale, um, the thing at the end with the rats too, was pretty, yeah, that was pretty, yeah, that was pretty, <laughs> pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah. And then you have like, cause if we're talking about pushing things too far, like having a child have to like see their parents yes. in that situation yeah, yeah. is pretty extreme. I don't know. Yeah. I felt a bit dirty watching this movie. I wasn't. Yeah. It's not what I want to go back and watch many times. No, no. And, and, but as I said before, I mean, if we go back to like 2008 or whatever it was, 2009, when I saw, um, the Rob zombie, um, Oh, devil's rejects. Yeah. Devil's rejects. That's how I felt then it was like, Oh man, can they do, but that's tame it in is. comparison to this. Or like the evil dead remake from 2013. Yeah. Or- like that is pretty extreme gore, but something about that I feel like I could watch more than this. I, th- you know what? E- even though I think for me the difference in that one—that's a good example—is uh, there's demonic possession in that one, which is I think somehow implied in this. Yeah. There's there's something about that, but the manifestation of that is looks like a human being doing these things. Yes. And I think it's, I feel somehow that it's playing on this idea of serial killers, like being demons, being monsters and being uh, less than human. And so, but anyway, my point is that in, um, in the evil dead remake, I felt like it was clearly demonic. And this one it's, more clearly human. Yeah. And that's, that raises the, the, I don't know, the ick factor or the going too far factor. Cause you think, okay, well possession, anything's. Yeah. I think right? I kind of agree. And that's kind of, but yeah. the thing that saves it for me is when she's like, Nope, I'm like this mythological hero and I'm going to get my like enchanted sword and I'm going to fight art, the clown. And he's been established as just this wickedly evil character. And so watching her go toe to toe with him and fight him, like, was kind of appealing. Like that oh. saved it for me rather than it's just like, oh, we're just sitting here reveling and watching Art the Clown just have his way with all these people and uh, like the finale, I, I, orgy of gore. But in this case, I like the the good versus evil thing kind of saves the movie. I agree 100% because I was actually in the finale. I was like, yeah, give it to him. And it, they, I, I think it's smartly too, they save it to the very end and they raise the stakes where he's done all this crazy stuff and then he gets... He doesn't get his because obviously they leave it open at the end. And there are some movies that just feel gross like the whole time. Yeah. Like I think maybe was it um, the other Rob Zombie won the Salem. Yeah. I forget. Anyways, but there's some films, you know, that just the entire thing you feel gross. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's like, no, but you do have likable characters. You do have this like good versus evil. You have these very like appealing, homey feeling environments. So you don't feel that ick factor the entire film. No. It's like, oh yeah, Art the Clown does these terrible things, but then you go back to like, there's still something good to latch on to and to fight yes. for and to root for. And I find some horror films are just like, we're just going to have disgusting gore the whole time and it feels just gross. Yeah, it feels dirty. Yeah. I think he spends, yeah, I agree. I think he spends enough time, for example, on the family. Um, you know, Sienna's relationship with her niece and with her yeah. uncle and her aunt. Like there's there's an element of goodness there that family sort of core family values, and right? It feels authentic and yes. they're well-developed characters and it's not just, hey, we're just creating scenarios for Yeah. I mean, there is that too, but it's, I think it's more than that. And that's sort of what makes it better. Yeah. I, that's what I appreciate. Cause I it. think the, the lack of redeeming things in a, in a Rob Zombie film, for example, is that he, I, I can't think of any of his films that I've watched where there's uh, redeeming characters where he's, there's enough 
of a character arc that you actually care yeah. or that you know, okay, this character is good compared to everything just seems seedy. Yeah. So like Cannibal Holocaust or Martyrs or yeah. um, a Serbian film or like even some of the soft films at times, just like yeah. this movie is just relentlessly gross. Yeah. Hostel's the same for me. Yeah. Like the, the guys on the trip are just kind of, you know, nasty bros. And then there's, I know. You, I know. I, I think know. there's elements of comedy in that one that, but yeah, fair enough. But yeah, I think the point is like the thing that's so interesting and captivating about the Terrifier films is it's not just that though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you and have, he spends enough time that you do care. Yeah. As, actually quite a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and almost more so as it's gone on. I don't think the first Terrifier had that as much. No, not that I recall. But the thing I think I appreciate about Terrifier 2 and Terrifier 3 is it does have a pretty fine balance between the, the good side and the evil side. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, if you're, if you can stomach it, I think it's, it's always noteworthy. Like hundred percent when yeah. I sit down to make my top 10, I mean, this movie packs a punch and leaves things <laughs> ingrained in your brain that other ones that are more forgettable. And that's what sort of like, it might make my top 10, even though really like, I don't know if I enjoy watching it, but there's something about it. That's so yeah significant and impactful. Like when I'm reflecting back on the year and the horror films that like, so many good films this year, though. How How is this going to make the top 10? It may not, but I'm just saying I wouldn't rule it out at this point because it makes an impact. Yeah, I, actually, to be to be honest, I won't rule it out um, and say it, it couldn't possibly because I may go back and look at some of the ones and go, nah, I mean, it was good, but it, it wasn't, it didn't have the impact that this one did. So, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think part of the reason I didn't go back and rewatch the old, this is not a franchise I want to watch through multiple times. No. It's pretty hard to watch. Yeah. And this is like hardcore horror people saying that, right? So. And I've done the same as you. Like it's been over several years where I've gone back, you know, and watched All Hallows Eve and the second one and then Terrify. I mean, I don't think I've actually gone back and rewatched Terrifier. Yeah. I, I saw it the one time I think with you. Um, I think we've seen all three Terrifier films with you. Yeah, it's even um, amazing, like, having gone back. So I watched the Saw franchise, the Halloween franchise, the Friday the 13th franchise, and now I'm on Nightmare on Elm Street. And they're, like, tame compared to this. Oh. Like, a lot of that is actually shown off screen. Yes. Like, they don't even show it a lot of the time. Yeah. And what's happening in those films for a slasher, if you want to put it next to <laughs> Art the Clown, There's like, no, yeah, it looks like child's play. Like, it's There's just, no comparison. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So... I think that's been interesting too, watching these old slashers and almost feeling like, oh, these feel really tame. But when you're used to yeah. Art the Clown and what's his name, Johnny from uh, In a Violent Nature, yeah. we've definitely pushed the envelope. And speaking of Child's Play, I won't spoil anything, but but I think you are working on a special guest for some time in the future. Yes, we have... Uh, well, yeah, I won't reveal anything yet, but, yeah, but we will hopefully have a special guest. Yeah, but you're working on something, so that's exciting. Yeah, it is. So, I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to say about Terrifier 3? I don't know that I have anything else to say. So, you liked it better than Terrifier 2? Sitting here right now, probably yes. Okay. Yeah, probably yes. Yeah, I think Terrifier 2, I found parts of it were a little bit long or slow or yeah. boring. This one, I think, sustains. Yes. E even though it's a roller coaster, I didn't notice the time. As much nope, as that's I did true. in Terrifier 2, where yeah. it's like, okay, this is dragging a bit for me. Whereas this one kind of steamrolls all the way to the finale and then boom. That's right. Well, we are heading into November. We've only got a few episodes left this season and we'll finish with our top 10 of 2024. Correct. So stay tuned. So stay tuned. We have a few more notable films though to come out for the end of the year. Uh, so thanks for watching, listening, and, and we'll, we'll see you in the aisles. aisles.